This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Westmoreland Wanted Man in Custody Saval MacDonald, who was listed as wanted by the police, is now in custody. MacDonald, accompanied by his attorney, turned himself in on Wednesday. He is to be questioned. MacDonald, who is from Westmoreland, was wanted for wounding with intent. St. Catherine family homeless following fire A family of six has been left homeless after fire raised at their home on Williams Lane in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, early this morning. It is reported that about 2.46 a.m., fire was seen coming from an abandoned house. The flames then spread to the two-story premises occupied by the family, which included three adults and three children. Both properties were gutted. A grocery shop operated by the family was also destroyed. The blaze was extinguished by the fire department. The cause of the fire is not known and the loss is estimated at $15 million. The matter is being probed by the police. The police are maintaining a watchful eye after reports that the fire may be linked to ongoing gang violence in the area. Fake engine oil among $300 million in counterfeit goods is seized. Approximately $300 million in counterfeit goods, including engine oil, was seized from a wholesale on Princess Street in downtown Kingston Wednesday afternoon. Two persons have reportedly been taken into custody by the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch. Assistant Superintendent Victor Barrett, head of the CTOX Intellectual Property Unit, told the news that the practice of selling fake goods has become a lucrative business in Jamaica. He noted that they have received the reports from a brand rights holder and acted on the information. This store has a wide variety of counterfeit goods, from shoes, bags to engine oils, lotions, beads by Dre headphones. We have Puma, Nike, we have a lot of Crocs, we have Michael Kors, and some of them are even named Michael Roars. They are so creative and disrespectful to the brand's ACP Barrett said. He stressed that the counterfeit engine oils may cause irreparable damage to vehicles. Once we receive a report from a brand owner or rights holder, then we have a legal obligation to act. If you have a brand and you register your brand and recognize the brand in Jamaica and you have your certificate of registration from Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, then we as the police have a responsibility to act. The owner for the respective brands reached out to us, so we are here, ACP Barrett said. ACP Barrett told the news that the store was not ordered closed, as the merchant also has other goods that they are licensed to sell. NASWMA to embark on garbage collection drive in Westmoreland The National Solid Waste Management Authority is to embark on a massive drive to clear uncollected garbage across Westmoreland. The exercise is expected to start today. I would like to apologize for the built-up of garbage in the communities, Leona Bennett, Senior Public Cleansing Inspector for Westmoreland and Hanover, said at today's monthly meeting of the Westmoreland Municipal Corporation. I would like to assure the residents of Westmoreland that it is not the Western Parks and Market or the National Solid Waste Management Authority's wish to have garbage that is not removed. It is due to the downtime of both the companies and the supplementary units, she said. According to the agency's report tabled at today's meeting on the collection of garbage for the month of May, residents in 159 districts across all three constituencies have been experiencing major delays in the collection of the garbage. It was indicated that the delay is due to mechanical challenges with the three government-owned garbage trucks and another three from private contractors. It was added that the NSWMA will be working to clear the backlog. Florida man with ties to Jamaican lottery scam gets 48 months in prison. A Florida man has been sentenced to 48 months in prison for his role in a lottery scam with ties to Jamaica. Sheldon Sean Hibbert, 43, was sentenced last week on charges of conspiracy to commit money laundering. Hebert had pleaded guilty to the offense. The court heard that he participated in a scheme where scammers called the elderly victims and falsely stated they had won a lottery. 
To receive their winnings, the victims were told they must first submit money for taxes and fees. Hibbert's role in the scheme, the court was told, was to help launder the fraudulent proceeds to Jamaica on behalf of his co-conspirators. As part of his sentence, the court also ordered a forfeiture money judgment against Hibbert, totaling $196,523. A restitution hearing has been scheduled for August 5. St. James Southern MP wants police to meet with the Tugs for crime solutions. In the wake of the spiraling murder rate in St. James, Minister Without Portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister, Homer Davis, is proposing that the police invite gang leaders for a sit-down as part of efforts to tame the crime monster. According to police statistics, between January 1 and June 6, 104 people were murdered in St. James, which is 26 more homicides when compared with the corresponding period in 2021. I am really agonizing over how we intercede with the gangs that are creating havoc in our space. I have a thought process assistant commissioner of police Clifford Chambers. I think if we can get the combatants, the leaders of these groups, gang together and put them in a space and to say, listen, tell me now where you are fighting for. Tell me what do you want? What do you need? What can we do to appease you? Davis, who is also member of parliament for St. James Southern, suggested. My take on it is that police have the information on all the violence producers in the parish. Why don't we start pulling them together, bring them together in a room and say, listen, you are G6 and you are G7 and you are 87. I am serious. What is the problem? If you have two children in the home that can't live together, don't you pull them together and say, listen, what is the problem? In most instances, those who are coming to these violence interruption or interrupting meetings are usually the people who don't want to get involved in crime or somebody who has probably got a brush with the law and doesn't want to get back into it. Davis underscored that a different approach is needed to cauterize the rampant bloodletting in the parish, but was quick to add that the police cannot tame the crime monster by themselves. Let me tell you, Commissioner, we have a big problem. We have 300 active gangs across Jamaica, and to be honest with you, with the best will in the world, the police alone can't manage. Don't make we fool ourselves. If we have a police on every corner, which we can't afford, I doubt if we would be able to manage it, he argued. We have to develop different approaches. Legislation is good, but legislation is not the all. We have the anti-gang legislation, and I have said over and over, if we continue on that same trajectory, we are going to choke the justice system. You can imagine 60 members of various gangs before a court with 60 attorneys with 60 cases. All I'm saying, Commissioner, I am in sympathy with the guys, but the strategy, in my opinion, needs to be revisited. I know you're doing a lot, and you have the intelligence base, and you have the this, but let me tell you, when two people plan to shoot up a house, you don't know. You can't know. But what the police do know is where the attacks are coming from, and who are the responsible characters. Davis was speaking at a function organized by Montego Bay businessman Lachu Ramchandani and other members of the business community to welcome the St. James Police Division, Superintendent Carlos Russell from Chuloni, who is deputizing for Senior Superintendent Vernon Ellis, who is on leave and the Deputy Superintendent of Police, Aaron Samuels, in charge of operations in the resort city of Montego Bay on Saturday. Assistant Commissioner of Police Clifford Chambers who is in charge of the Era 1 Police Division, which comprises the parishes of Trelawney, St. James, Hanover, and Westmoreland, cited that St. James is one of the most difficult divisions. Anything you speak about in terms of crime, violence, guns, gangs, drugs, you name it, money laundering, it's here, ACP Chambers noted. Meanwhile, Davis, who has responsibility for coordinating special projects and a major development in the OPM West, stressed that St. James is a very unique parish. It is a parish that performs the best in terms of its economy, but in terms of crime, it is a challenging place, a very challenging place. The police here in St. James tend to enjoy a very good working relationship with us as a business people and us as a law-abiding citizens, said Davis, who is a former member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He, however, called for more support from the citizens as he cringed at the number of guns coming in through the country's porous borders. We need more support from our citizens. Imagine on our highway you stop a vehicle and you recover nine firearms, including three M16s, plus six other weapons. This is the Jamaica we are. If we can have more of that every day or week, 
then we will begin to see the reduction that we are seeing. But I am sure that as the police recover 9, we might have 90 coming in tomorrow morning because we have an open border, Davis lamented. He gave his commitment to give whatever support he can to the police. My office is open. As I have been saying, I am the convey of the Prime Minister in the Cabinet. So if there's a challenge that you are going through and you need my help, call me. I have to do my part as a Jamaican, as a leader, and as a former member of this great institution, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Davis said. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.